Greetings folks, Jason from Ishibashi Music Shibuya in Tokyo here. For those of you out there who watch my videos, you're going to be probably looking at this and going, wow, this looks so much different. What's going on here? Well, I've got myself some new gear. Uh, last month, so May, it's now June 2nd today when I'm doing this. Last month in May, in fact on May 3rd, I went to Los Angeles and shot a music video with Michael Sweet from Striper, George Lynch from Dokken, James Lomenzo from White Lion, Megadeth, plays with John Fogarty now. And the drummer on the album, Brian Titchy from Dead Daisies and played Pride and Glory with James Lomenzo and Zach Wilde back years ago and he's done a lot of other projects too. Uh, those guys recorded an album together which is the second Sweet and Lynch album. Now what happened is that back in 2015 I did an interview at NAMM with James Lomenzo and this year 2017 I did an interview at NAMM with Michael Sweet. Michael on his video famously said uh, Michael actually watched a couple of my videos and uh, it turns out he likes my work. I'm stoked. Dude. Uh, the, the Steve Vai footage blew my mind and we discussed you coming to shoot a striper show. I would be so, so we got to make that happen man. Thank you. And it'll be the best live striper video we've ever had. That's a pretty big Let's endorsement. Let's do it. And whilst it isn't a striper video that I did I actually went over to Los Angeles and filmed the first single which is called Walk. Did the music video uh, for the second Sweet and Lynch album with those guys. Now, Brian couldn't make it, and thankfully, a friend of mine, Travis Dragani from Adelaide, South Australia, my hometown, who just amazingly was in LA, I'll tell the story about that on another video sometime, came along and did the video shoot, did a phenomenal job. Thank you again, Travis, for doing such a great job. That music video for Walk, once again, Sweet and Lynch, it's the first single off their second album due out later in 2017. The song, or the music video, will be released in August, I believe. The video looks great and I'm really proud of it. Uh, I can't show you any now, I'm sorry to say, but it'll be out soon. Point being, when I went and did that job, I got a new camera and I'm using it right now. I'm using a Canon 5D Mark IV with a uh, beautiful L-series lens on the camera as well. Uh, it's not a GoPro. I've gone up a little bit here. I'm still gonna do stuff with GoPros, but I just wanted to make something special because I've just turned into a porn director today. A guitar porn director, mind you, but I'm going to show you guys two Ibanezes that are, are just going to blow your brains out because I dare say a lot of you have been looking at these. I know one in particular. I'll go with the first one, which is actually the more expensive of the two. Here is the JCRG1601. Now, there was three of these guitars made in this series. There was an RG, which this is. There was an S series, and there was an RGA1, and there was only three of each made. And I know, sorry, some cultures, that's offensive. Anyway, three, whatever. Um, this is one of the three of the RGs that was made and it's exclusively here in the Shibuya store. What makes this guitar so different? Well, it's a neck through to start with, which is something that Ibanez doesn't do a whole lot of. And it's got Damasio Fusion Edge pickups in it. It's got a coil tap to be able to go from humbucker to single coil, three-way switch as to both of these two guitars I'm gonna show you. Uh, this one has an Edge Zero tremolo system on it. Um, rosewood fingerboard which is a beautiful selected rosewood beautiful gorgeous gorgeous guitar really sweet looking baby this one now the second guitar second guitar hold on to your hats kids because I know you're gonna love this is the Ibanez development center guitar that so many people will be, so many people have been freaking out over I'm gonna drop the ISO on my camera here I've got a laptop set up that I can do all this sort of stuff from and that way you'll be able to see the grains better on the ash see how that looks the grains on this thing it almost looks blue the way it comes through I'll show you on the back as well gorgeous gorgeous guitar all right set my ISO back to where it was so that we can see me and the rest of the shop and everything else better and this has uh, also glow in the dark fret markers crazy enough which is super cool I did try and get some shots of that it didn't really come up that well um, it has a humbucker, a single coil switch on there, a three-way switch, a volume control, uh, the Ibanez Low Pro Edge, which is my personal favorite tremolo out there, and the pickups on this one are the bare knuckle aftermath pickups. Really super sweet sounding guitar, this one. So I'll plug it in and let you have a listen to it. <laughs> This is a pretty sweet guitar. I love Ash myself on guitars. I'm a real big fan of Ash. Here's the sound with the humbucker. Yeah. 
Now the sound of the single coil. As you can hear, it's really different sound. A bit better on the tuning now. Okay, so now we'll go up to the neck pickup. Here's the neck humbucker. And the next single coil. Love that single coil sound. Here's a roughly half mast volume setting. And we'll go with the same setting, but humbucker. Very cool. Switch over to the clean sounds. Now on the Marshall JVM 210H that I'm using, I've got uh, the reverb set to about four roughly. So let's go with the bridge humbucker. Bridge single coil. The twin humbuckers. Twin single coils. The neck humbucker. And finally, the next single coil. Beautiful sounding guitar. So the big question that you've all been asking on the internet uh, through Facebook and wherever else is, what the hell is the Ibanez Guitar Development Center? And luckily for you all out there, I'm actually friends with the guy who is the head of the Ibanez division of Hashino Music. So I'm gonna tell you what the story is. Story goes that the Ibanez Guitar Development Center in our foreign thinking minds is basically their Japanese version of the custom shop. Now it's not actually what it is though. What it actually is, is that's where they do their prototyping of the bass guitar range, mostly. They do a certain amount of guitar stuff, they do a certain amount of artist prototyping, prototyping there, I should say, not prototyping. Um, and the guys come up with this particular instrument. Uh, another thing that they do there, by the way, is they prototype the bass hardware there as well. Um, they do some of the guitar stuff, but that's what I've been told, is it's very largely a bass focus area. However, uh, one of the guys, Miyazawa-san, who's actually a buddy of mine as well, who works for Ibanez in a different division, him and a couple of the guys come up with the concept for this particular guitar, and I'm really stoked that they did it, because there's a few really cool things about this guitar that makes it unique. Firstly, being all ash is something Ibanez don't do a whole lot of, and I love ash, as I stated before. They've also got this new access up, well, actually, the all access neck joint is the same, but this new cutaway in here, um, which I hope you can see there. You, go, you can see it there on that angle which is really cool. And when you put your hand up there, it sits in real nice. Because I mean, you know, if you're playing up here on the, on the 24th fret and you want to bend up there, your hand actually sits inside of that contoured area as you can see right there. Sorry. Let's try that with gain and see what happens. <laughs> I'm not playing overly loud in this room at all, just to give you an idea, because I usually switch between mics. I'm gonna talk while I'm playing, so you can hear the difference in volume. So I don't normally do that at the same time. I switch mics, like I said. So I did ask the boss of the Ibanez division, 
if there's any chance that they're going to turn it into a custom shop so that you and me and everyone else can order their guitars and have an Ibanez custom shop and there is no immediate plans. His words were basically there's nothing to say that it may not happen in the future but there is no plans to do it right now whatsoever. To do it in the future could mean in five years, it could mean in 10 years, it could mean in 20 years, it could mean never. So don't go counting on it and expecting it and writing Jason from Ushiboshi said that this is going to happen because it's not what I'm saying. It could but it's pretty unlikely that it will. Uh, this guitar though is the very first guitar that they've ever released from the Ibanez Guitar Development Center and there are, as it says on our price card here, only six pieces made and thankfully we've got one of them here at the Shibuya store. Um, this is a beautiful instrument which I really, really dig and I, I'm not going to be buying it myself as much as I'd like to because I spent crazy money on this camera. <laughs> it's what I'm concentrating on now is video. Beautiful instrument. So now across to the JCRG1601. This is a monster, this thing. Let's go through the clean sounds of this guitar. I'll play pretty much the same thing as what I did on the other guitar, but in a shorter version. So we'll start out with the bridge humbucker. The bridge single coil. Twin humbuckers. Twin single coils. It's a nice tone. Neck humbucker. And finally, neck single coil. All right, let's do the test where we just hit a chord and let it ring out and see what happens. So we'll start with E. Just moved it back in closer to my body. I just realized I was leaning on it when I moved it back. It actually changed the frequency. And we'll do it on A as well. funny my breathing is changing it <laughs> very sensitive I like that it's cool this guitar sounds really fat the other guitar sounds a bit thinner but I really like the sound of ash as I've mentioned many times so it's cool so look there's a look at these two guitars I have one each in the store here uh, unfortunately the only way you'll be able to buy them is if you come to Japan or you have a friend who lives in Japan that can get it for you because with the new Rosewood international shipping laws I can't send these two guitars out around the world myself uh, the way around it is once again you either have to come to Japan to get them yourself or you have to have a friend who's living here who will buy it for you 
Only thing is if your friend lives here, they can't buy a tax-free purchase. But if you have a friend coming to Japan on holiday, they can get a tax-free purchase on your behalf or they have to bring in their passport and do a tax-free purchase. Uh, likewise, if you're coming to Japan on holiday, you can do a tax-free purchase yourself too. Um, and you, you get the tax off here in the store. It's the way it works. The tax is 8% here in Japan. So you get out your calculator and divide the price by 1.08. To be honest with you, these are expensive instruments, but they're also very limited. I mean, the white one's only six pieces made. This is only three pieces made. Um, there's the card for the white one. And there's the card for this one here that's in my hands. They're not cheap, but they're very special, unique instruments, and they do feel like a million bucks. There's no question of it whatsoever. They both do. I own a lot of Ibanez guitars myself, so I can tell you that factually. So, once again, this has been Jason from Ishibashi Music, Shibuya in Tokyo. Hope you enjoyed the look at these beautiful, beautiful, very limited, exclusive Ibanez guitars. And as I always finish off, rock on. <laughs>